Now, immediately after this, probably the same day, we get an announcement yeah. that Captain America 4 is being written. Um, there's also some rumbling that Chris Evans might be involved. He's gonna oh, I didn't hear that. I heard he was in a different project. I heard this was not Marvel? the project. Yeah. The rumor is he's not in involved with Captain America 4. He's still rumored to be involved with another MCU project, which I agree with you. I think he's either going to be a Skrull or the Hydra version of Steve Rogers or just something we haven't seen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. rumor is it's not actually this. I, or at least I didn't see that report. Yeah, I, 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 sort of, I could have sworn I, I read that, that he, but this is just rumor. Um, but he could be involved in another project. Whatever project that, that Steve Rogers is involved in, he is a scroll, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, what do you think about the writers being on, being chosen to do Captain America 4? Great. I love it. I mean, I think from a continuity perspective, you know, don't let our don't let our critiques of the finale take away from what was some very interesting, compelling television. Um, and I think if you are going to carry this story forward as Captain America and the Winter Soldier, then these are the right people to do it. Um, I, did, I did note that they are not directing; they are scripting. So they're yeah. taking over from Marcus and McNeely, who did a phenomenal job on not just um, Captain America movies, but also on Infinity War and Game. And really did did MCU a solid for for a decade. So no, I'm excited to see who they put in the director's chair because it obviously won't be the Russo brothers. And listen, I mean, this is the gold standard franchise that Marvel has put forward. So the standard is very high. Like our expectations, I think, at this point for a Captain America film are very high. Very high, very high indeed. And Although you're saying don't let the, it still gives me a little bit of a concern that we, you know, because again, this is not six episodes. This is two hours, pop, two hours tops. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, because again, like you said, the expectations are high for a Captain America film. Now that it's going to be Sam. I mean, we've seen Chris Evans for in Captain America series. You know, it was his it was his it was his joint, yeah. right? And now it's not him. How are we gonna receive that? What epic moments is Sam gonna be put in? Is he gonna be the focal point? Is somebody gonna outshine him? Because in none of the films that Chris Evans was in, nobody outshined him. Which I think is. I've said this many times. The way the character is written in the comics, it is very hard to make that character the best character in a Captain America movie. It's just a pretty straightforward, simple, good old fashioned type of character, which oftentimes can be boring and kind of one note. So it takes a lot. And Chris Evans owned this part after being reluctant to play it in a way that we actually walked out of these films being like, yeah, he actually was the best part yeah, of those films. Yeah, yeah. The, all all those adjectives you used sound similar to Superman, but that's another thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to your point, this is the quintessential. You know, we have a championship team, and our our Tom Brady retired, right? And like, and but the rest of the team is there. So the question is. And they move to that primary option, the quarterback position, yeah. and actually still win another title. Like, yeah. that's basically what this is going to be. Yeah. And Tom Brady won with another team. And <laughs> Well, I'll say this. I do yeah. think Mackey plus Stan together works. That is gold. Every time they're on screen together, it lights up the camera. Yeah. And, you know, regardless of what I think about the suit or what I think about the speech in the finale... I think Anthony Mackie definitely did enough in this show to make me feel oh, yeah. like you can center a property on him. And if he's your alpha and kind of Sebastian Stan is your kind of 1A, yeah, it can work. Like you give him the right material, this can work. Um, I do think there's some work to do. Yeah. But, you know, quite honestly, when we came off of First Avenger, 
Chris Evans had some work to do. It was a quantum leap for yeah, Winter yeah. Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it'll be curious to see where they take this, man, because, uh, like, like you said again, and I hate to, to repeat it, but it has, the expectations are high, so we'll see. Let us know what you think in the comment section below about Captain America 4. Does it have uh, the team backing it like they did for the rest to for the rest of the other uh captain america films that we got um does it does it can it get us there to those epic moments let us know in the comment section below um so we got some announcements for secret invasion we have uh olivia coleman announced this is insane by the way why why do you say that i mean this just shows how this genre has changed so much in the last decade. Like, this woman just won an Academy Award two years ago, has won all sorts of awards for, for The Crown, which you, I mean, could not be further away from the genre we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And Olivia Coleman wants to be in an MCU movie, like that, an MCU series. Like, that's what. We're, we're we're at it's like these you know great like i mean i don't no idea who she's gonna be i have no because i don't totally know where they're going with this version of the story but that's incredible acting prowess to throw opposite sam jackson and ben mendelson and i know you got another casting announcement to discuss but i mean let's put it this way my fascination with this show is going way up just because of who's in it yes and i just have to say like compared to where we were a few years ago where you know some of these actors and actresses were not bad mouthing but you know looking not looking down on this so to speak but not giving it the respect that it deserves and now we have you know academy award winning um individuals joining and wanting to be a part of this 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 train that just yeah. keeps going. Yeah. Um Amelia Clark joins also a secret invasion, whom her career hasn't been that uh how would we call it? Uh what word would I use? There hasn't been a lot of accolades for her. Um after Game of Thrones. She's been in Star Wars. Uh, she was in uh, Terminator, right? And yeah, you're, you're kind of you're kind of you're kind of glossing over the the, <laughs> the the correlation here. This is this might be the MCU heat check because yeah, Amelia Clark was not in Star Wars. She was in Solo, which ended the Star Wars anthology yeah, yeah, universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was in Terminator Genesis, which I mean. Dark Fate is actually not that bad, but Genesis was so bad that it probably made the franchise unsalvageable. So that's that's two. That's that's two, right? So this, you know, she's and, she's look she's looking for that franchise. And this is like, gonna be know, it. They should put her and Oscar Isaac in the show together. They're both so desperate to find that franchise. <laughs> Just pair them up. And... But hey, I think if you're in Marvel. There's there's no way to go but up. Yeah. There's no way to go but up. I think to be fair, neither of those movies I'm alluding to were Amelia Clark's fault. It's just yeah. a it just happens to coincidence be, yeah, that she happened to be in exactly. Both of those. Exactly. Um so again, just to 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 wrap this up with the, the secret invasion thing, I think Captain America 4, uh Secret and uh the Secret Invasion a series and whatever future movie that's gonna is gonna end with something big. Yeah. But I mean look at this lineup we've already set just through two shows and casting news, right? So you have Sam Jackson, Ben Mendelssohn, which you knew you were gonna have. Yeah. You Monica Rambo, we know is part of this now because yeah. of the end of WandaVision. Yeah. Sharon Carter, we know, is probably part of this now because of the end of this show. 
And then you get Amelia Clark and Olivia Coleman. And by the way, I'd be shocked if Julia Louis Dreyfus wasn't in this series, just given oh, yeah. the connections to Nick Fury. That's an insane cast for a TV yeah, show. Yeah. It, it is all over the map. I have, I have no idea where this is headed, but I'm absolutely fascinated. I, like if we I, redid our rankings and threw this show on the list, it'd be high, just oh, for yeah. me, for curiosity. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I don't know where they're going to go with this. I There's definitely going to be a lot of aha moments and betrayals, and it's going to be dramatic. And I am looking forward to seeing how they tell this version uh, of Secret Invasion, because uh, it's a classic storyline in the comics. And we all know what they did with uh, the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Yeah. And, you know, it was funny. I was watching today on, because on, I think t- this uh, today marks two year anniversary of Endgame. I forget. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Release of, uh, of Maybe you're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're right. And they were showing clips of the crowd reaction of when um, Captain America. Uh, picks up the hammer. Huh? Yeah, picks, picks up the, the hammer. Ha- picks up the hammer and the portals start opening up. Oh, oh yeah. It's, I get I get chills every time I, I watch something like that. It's just it's just it brings it takes me back to the theaters watching that. There's there's no movie that brings that I, I haven't experienced a feeling like that in the movie theaters before that Ooh. probably gladiator and matrix maybe gladiator what scene in gladiator got it for you um when they were che- when they were doing maximus maximus i felt that okay. <laughs> that was so, that was a dope moment okay so I'm, this is all right let's go on a tangent because this is a great discussion so i'm with you i think this is one of in my lifetime would definitely be one of the top five theatrical experience moments the hammer lifting up until avengers assemble i had it as my number one fight was was this but that crowd amped for that i would throw on the list um jurassic park when you see the cgi dino for the first time you're like what is this this is possible yeah yeah. that's one you read the matrix i was trying to think of what the moment in the is it the dojo fight? I don't think it's the Trinity fight at the beginning, even though that's the first bullet time scene. It might be the dojo fight between Keanu and, and Lawrence Fishburne. I was trying to think, like, what's the moment you kind of, like, lost your mind watching that that movie? There's definitely a couple, but yeah, there's what's the first few. moment? The first moment? Damn, it's hard, because I haven't seen that movie in a while, but still, the moments that reach out to me is definitely the dojo. Um, when he's fighting Agent Co- uh, Agent Smith at the end, um, especially subway, at the, very the subway end. platform fight, yeah, the subway yeah, platform okay. fight, and then at the very end when he finally knows I can do this. Okay, that that was that was a that was like old snap scene, you know. Okay, I think the other one for me would probably be the Terminator Two when they meet yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, hallway yeah, 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 and he yeah, says, yeah, get yeah, down yeah. and it's on. Yeah, that's yeah, probably, yeah, the, and, yeah. and also that's when you see the, the full effects of the, back then what was revolutionary CGI and the T-1000. Yeah. That's probably the other one that comes to mind. Yeah. We're not old, I'm not old enough to remember original Star Wars in the theater, so I can't mm-hmm. say any of those. Like, supposedly my dad took me to see Empire Strikes Back <laughs> when I was one, but I can't tell you, yeah. I remember Luke, I am your father, even though <laughs> no. I'm assuming, oh, I'm assuming man. that has to be maybe the what? all-time moment because no what? one knew. Yeah. Everybody, must, I, I wish I would have been in the theater just to see that because I was, I went crazy when I was a kid when I first saw that. Right. I didn't know anything and I saw it. I was like, oh, snap. It was it was it was a it was a fantastic moment. I wish I would have been in theaters for that. Um, and, and I'll mention just one other thing before I, 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 we move on. Uh, it would have to be um, Equilibrium. I don't know if you ever saw that with Kristen Bale. Wow, I love this movie. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. I love this that, movie. When he took out the gun and and they wanted to check the trunk and the dog was there and he had to turn it on. And they were like, shoot, shoot. <laughs> Cause they knew that's it. He was gonna kill them all. And and that was just beautiful choreo- choreography in terms of 
how they did the the shooting stuff. That was dope. That was dope. okay. So <laughs> we're way off the of dead. We're way off. <laughs> All right. So Cleric John Preston versus John Wick. Who's winning gunfight? Cleric. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, that's the original gun martial arts yeah, that, that, yeah, that yeah. John Wick has now made famous. If people don't realize that, go back and watch. It's basically it's basically a martial art using a handgun. Yes, that's yes, basically yes. what that movie. Is. Hell's yeah! You, if you guys haven't watched Equilibrium, it's worth it. Yeah, it's that. It, it didn't make any noise in the. It, it was a sleeper. It was one of those cult classic type of things. And Christian Bale is not Christian Bale yet. He's done yeah. American Psycho, but it's basically before he blows up. Hey, yeah. Diggs. <laughs> in the movie. With his same move. <laughs> <laughs> he did that move like five times. <laughs> oh, man. I told you I'd make my career off of you, Cleric. Um, yeah. Let's move on. Russell Crowe. He spilled the beans, and I'm pretty sure nobody said anything to him. He probably, and if they did, he probably just looked at him and walked away. Yeah. He, um, he's playing Zeus, which is very interesting, and I've heard it elsewhere, because if that is the case, right, that means Hercules is around. Yep. And Brian, if they cast Hercules, the guy that should play Hercules. I don't I haven't seen this movie, but I know the guy from other stuff that he's I think some probably documentaries on Netflix. Uh he's a bodybuilder. And I and, and we did a show a long time ago uh on on the Hercules series if they ever decide to do it and who they should cast. Um I his name he, he did um he was in um that Joe Weeder movie, Bigger. He played Arnold. Uh, he, he He's the perfect guy. If look him up. Look up bigger and look up the guy that played Arnold in that movie. Hmm. Hercules should be a big dude. That's, that's Hercules. Everybody's saying, oh, Henry, no, Henry, leave Henry Cavill alone. There's other people out there that can portray Hercules. And this guy is the perfect guy. Visually, well, I want to pull it off. Well, so ironically, what about the guy who played Zeus in the Snyder Cut? We just talked about him a few weeks ago. Is he big enough? Oh yeah, he's huge. I don't know anything about his charisma as an actor, but yeah, that that would be that would be could. the differentiating factor right there. This yeah. guy, uh, you know, he's 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 that's what he wants to do. He wants to be an actor. He wants to be the next Arnold. So uh, if they can do that, I don't think I don't think you need to be a great actor to be Hercules. I don't think, depending on how they write him. Uh, but this guy would be perfect. Found well, well let's let's get into that rabbit. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Though. So, we don't know much about the extent of Russell Crowe's role. We assume it's pretty small, just given the ensemble nature of this movie. But to your point, the fact that Zeus makes an appearance at all, and by the way, the MCU version of or the Marvel version of Zeus is actually really close to the mythological version. The, the origins, the powers, they're pretty comparable. Where it changes is where he starts to interact with the other heroes. Mm -hmm. So do you think kind of like full-fledged Olympians, like the whole kind of universe of Zeus, Hercules, the other kind of gods in that sense, the kind of the Greek S god, are they all in play because of this casting? I would assume they are, but I don't know if they'll go that deep into it. I'm Not in this movie, but I'm yeah, saying yeah. like should we view this as like tip of the iceberg and we're kind of headed down this path of again i don't i don't i don't know i don't know i think it'll be zeus and then hercules and that's about it i don't know if they'll get into a, a, a introduction of the whole family and stuff like that like if you check i don't know if you've seen it brian but blood of zeus on netflix yeah you recommended it to me yeah check it out it. check it out check it out it, it, it wasn't that great there were some ho plot holes there, but definitely I would, if you like that sort of stuff, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I, you know I'm going to watch. I'm just it. wondering, because we're, we're obviously doing the Eternals, like, are, are they, would they go, you know, Titans, Olympians, and kind of, and those, some of the classic Greek storylines are are basically adapted into comics, and so there's Hades trapping Zeus and trapping some of the other guys. I'm curious, I, I'm fascinated. When I saw it, I was like, wow, this, this, I hope this is not an idle 
cameo Easter egg nod to the fans. I really hope it's a world opening move. But that's the thing. Where in the MCU universe, universe does it fit? I think that's the question that they'll try to answer. I know Hercules fits in perfectly because he's an Avenger, right? Yeah. Um, but the others, I don't know. And, and, and that's a question I think they'll probably look at and see if it makes sense. But right. I don't know if it, it'll make its way to TV or uh, movies anytime soon. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below about Russell Crowe playing Zeus. Is it going to be just a small camera? Is it going to be a flashback? Is it going to be part of a storytelling piece? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, for the Eternals, Chloe Zhao, Oscar-winning director. That's what you're going to see next in the commercials. Yeah. Especially uh, like a month or two out. You're going to see that. And anybody who doesn't know... who doesn't know anything about Marvel, are probably just going to go see what Chloe Zhao does with a Marvel film. Because if you see Nomadland, or Nomadland, that's, that's the yeah. other movie, right? There's no CGI. There's no... This is, you know... There's nothing Marvel-ism <laughs> in this. Marvel's... The, the, we talk about the Eternals. This is going to be something way different. I am even more, I mean, I was curious before, but the hype that's going to be built around this is going to be even bigger. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, it's hard to get more excited, but you're right. I mean, the Marvel's getting luck, I mean, as if they needed any luck. They're getting luckier because they will be able to plaster this as the Academy Award, the reigning Academy Award winning director's next film, even though she shot it yeah. actually probably prior to shooting yeah. No Man Land. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. I mean, all the things she said about the manga inspiration, the ability to shoot big set pieces on real sets, which, you know, we know that has become part of the machine of Marvel and Disney, because it, it really originated with The Mandalorian, is this revolutionary thing they came up with of sort of like the warehouse, the one warehouse that becomes all of the locales, and it looks believable. Saves them so much money, saves them so much time. So then you have this director that's like, no, 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 I want to go and shoot like the way The Revenant was shot, <laughs> where I'm using real natural lighting, and I'm going to have a huge action set piece at Twilight, which you never typically see because film doesn't really capture that very well yeah. so yeah all sorts of and then you layer in the cast you know, on top yeah. of that which by the way i just want to point out and I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times before angelina jolie is being kept under wraps like nothing else like look at all the lineups promotional material she is not on any of them yeah. and i'm just it's not it cannot be a coincidence that are holding back whatever her role is in this uh, and, and look, they have plenty of other main, they have plenty of other mainline actors and big names and a real diverse cast to kind of. So, but I just I note that because she obviously is probably the biggest name of them all, and yet she has been conspicuously absent from all of the promotional material so far. Yeah, Eternus is going to be a monster. If Mortal Kombat was a monster, <laughs> this is going to be a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> well, to your your comment about Endgame, I mean, you know, as you said, only two years ago, we were seeing a film make a billion dollars in a single weekend, and all of us were part of huge crowds of theaters cheering on events. And you know, now we're just hopeful that between Godzilla versus Kong and Mortal Kombat, we're on our way back to yeah. to those moments again. But you know, I don't know what the first mo movie that will compel me to get into uh, well i don't i know the answer to this actually i shouldn't say i don't know i know the answer to this what's the first movie that will compel me to, to not pay or wait for a rental and go to the theater but i hope that when i do it that i actually hope there'll be people there because i hope there's opportunities to cheer or you know oh the one topic we we need to add to our list uh shang chi that's oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the one i can't <laughs> I can't, I can't stay at home for that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I almost don't want to stay home for Black Widow, man. 
because I, I don't want like, to either, but I think I may wind up paying thirty bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think about the Eternals, and are, are, are you are is this going to be as big as we already thought it was going to be? Let us know in the comment section below. Our final topic is uh, HBO Max. Well, do you um, want to talk about the trailer? Of which trailer? Tom G. Did we talk about it? No. You know, that's crazy. I was thinking about it as you said, mentioned Shang-Chi. I was like, Yo, we, did we do a show about Shang-Chi? Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, I said it would be within 30 days of the Black Widow decision, and it turned out to be Simu Liu's birthday. Yeah. That was the day. <laughs> um, I'm curious to see what you have to say about it. Hmm. Slightly underwhelmed. Not out on it. There were a few, there were definitely some moments that I was like, if you're holding back the best parts, I really want to see the best parts. The high point for me is the fight with Death Dealer that is silhouetted. There's only two shots of that. It's sort of Death Dealer flying into Shang-Chi. They're fighting with like a neon background, so you can kind of only see their shadows at points. And there's a couple of shots in there that are look almost like 360, where he's kind of grabbing the weapon, but it looks like the weapon's coming at you, even though it's not 3D. That's my favorite shot of the trailer where I'm like, if the act, I want to see that action set piece because that looked like some pretty high level martial arts. I was taken aback, not necessarily in a bad way, but I wasn't expecting it. This trailer had so many homages to other films. It was crazy. Crack so the, the, wire, the, the wire work in the Asian martial arts epic, which clearly was the inspiration for the, I guess that's a, flashback scene to young mandarin it looked like that's yes. what we were seeing yes. so that was one yeah i mentioned the death dealer fight scene if you've ever seen skyfall it's very reminiscent of the fight that daniel craig has in the hotel or whatever it is that, that skyscraper was that was that was which is awesome but it looked very similar right so that i thought that was an homage to that and then kind of on a humorous note at the end where they're doing the San Francisco trolley car, that looks just like The Rock. If you remember <laughs> the scene where Sean Connery's trying to get away from Nicolas Cage, yeah, it was yeah, very yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. That should have also involved a trolley car um, crashing. So I, there were definitely these moments where I was like, I'm watching this amalgam of like seven or eight films that I've seen and they're being put into this as, as inspiration. So, um, you know, I, I, say, I say a little underwhelmed. That's only because my expectations were astronomically yeah, yeah. and i and you and i talked about sort of the martial arts aspect of that and i'm not sure i'd be curious to hear your take i'm not sure our expectations were quite met with this trailer but listen when he does his little split kick on the bus and makes the dope. iconic gesture i'm like i'm in that was dope hey they're definitely holding back on the actual fight they gave us that little quick they gave us quick stuff about different fights that are being had in the film i'm cool with it um i got we got our first uh, shot of what battle cat might look like mm -hmm. <laughs> if david did he man um but yeah definitely they're holding back uh I was a little bit underwhelmed too, but not to the point where I'm like, I'm not looking forward to it. I just, no. I think they're purposely holding back and not showing as much as they can show. So up for us to be just drooling and going to the movie theaters to go see this, but uh, there'll, there'll be more that's gonna be released. And I'm looking forward to those uh, revelations. We finally got to see some footage. I was like, we, after all this time, it was like, okay. And I will say like the, the flashback training scenes looked awesome. Like where he's a kid and some of the stuff he's going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked awesome where he's being trained up. So I was like, you know, that reminded me of some of the, the kind of the classic martial arts, you know, similar type of yeah. motifs. So some of that stuff actually looked really, really good. But the tournament, uh, 
we got it look like a shot or two of their version of the octagon, like with that lighted blue lit yeah. cage that he's in. But they really did not show you anything of the like actual kind of tournament fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably was smart. Yeah. I, I'm curious to, to, we already got a glimpse of what this uh, dragon, is it, is it Fink Bang Foom, right? Fink Bang Foom, yeah. Yeah. Is it gonna be too ridiculous for you? Is it gonna make it? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It's just gonna look weird to to see that. Yeah, I guess the and, risk is if it's too CGI a villain, does that take away from like a true, you know, Bruce Lee Chuck Norris type of martial arts showdown? Because you're fighting a creature, you can't really do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see uh, how they they put that into play and how it looks and and what it translates to in terms of storyline, right? Um, HBO Max, let us know what you think about Shang-Chi because we've been waiting for it. Were you underwhelmed? Or were you, are you just as excited as you were before? We're not nowhere in terms of, uh, least less excited about this. We're I'm going to see this film in the movie theaters, no matter what. Um, but let us know what you think in the comment section below. HBO Max, AT and T uh, disclosed their earnings last week, and according to their numbers, they were only able to get 2.7 million subscribers. And I, I think there was, we thought HBO Max said, you know, let's release the Snyder Cut so that we can get subscribers. Brian, they got subscribers, but did they get the number that they would, we don't know what they were hoping for, but did they underwhelm in terms of the number of subscribers they were able to get onto their platform. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I'll officially throw in the towel based on those numbers, Snyder versus Dead. Straight up. Yes. <laughs> it, look, I always said it's about the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you got to call a spade a spade. Like to me, I grossly underestimated the degree. So. I grossly underestimated to which the degree to which this would be an event outside of the genre. I thought because of the long twisted saga around this, there would be this immense curiosity among people who were not necessarily existing DC or Marvel fans or comic book genre fans to see this and therefore to sign up and kind of just say, what, what's all the fuss about? Yeah. And especially once the reviews were decent, I thought, well, okay, like this will actually have a tail on it where people who maybe missed it right away, they'll come back around and they'll kind of subscribe, you know, right as the, the, the event is on the platform. Then you get Godzilla versus Kong right after that. And it's like, hey, you got reasons to be on this platform. Mm -hmm. The numbers just aren't big enough. I mean, they, they suggest that probably a decent amount of the fan base subscribed to HBO Max before this quarter. They probably were last quarter when Wonder Woman 84 was coming out. They were already on the platform as paying subscribers. And that this in and of itself didn't supercharge a new base of subscribers. And in fact, I don't know where you can tell where the line between Snyder Cut ends and King Kong versus and Godzilla versus Kong begins, because they were in the same quarter, technically. Even though Godzilla versus Kong was the last day of the quarter, but technically, if you were a March subscriber, you could see the film. Yeah. So I think, you know, to face facts, I don't think there's a financial justification for shelling out big bucks to continue this. Yeah. I, I just failed to see where the data would say you need more Snyderverse to keep the subscriber train running. Now, you know, defenders can probably point to, hey, the economy is reopening and people are, you know, there's less of this effect that Netflix enjoyed. Like, had this come out last year, would it have been different when everyone was at home and nothing else to do when Netflix was throwing up huge subscriber numbers? Because they had poor subscriber numbers as well. Like Netflix, 
you saw a big slowdown just optically there. But the bottom line is the numbers do not say to me that even if HBO Max is allowed to operate independent of Warner Brothers theatrical division, that they should be shelling out a big budget to do sequels and do follow-ups. And I would also point out that Zack Snyder has started doing interviews for Army of the Dead and has been beyond effusive in his praise of how Netflix treated him. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to Netflix. I don't even know if there is a competing offer on the table at this point. So yeah, look, I'm, I, I go by the numbers and the numbers say no more. So it is what it is. Yeah, man. When those numbers, when I saw those numbers, I was like, wow. <clears throat> Cause it's really hard to tell if, I mean, I'm pretty sure some of those people that subscribe, yeah, they went to go see, they, you know, they did it possibly for the Snyder Cup, but they most definitely did it for Godzilla versus Kong as well. Um, so it's hard to say, but yeah, had this movie come out in the theaters, no way this was going to be a four hour film. Um, three hours. I still think the movie would have done a billion dollars as a three hour cut with the reviews it had. As we said, I still stand by like it would have done one, 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 two, just saying, look, Batman versus Superman did over 800 and reviews were incredibly poor. I think this would have stepped that up. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that it just didn't have the universal appeal that I might have expected, given the buzz. Yeah. And Zach, so this definitely, I don't believe, as you said, I... You know, Zach has been talking about he doesn't, he's not sure that they're going to continue with this. He, you know, he's not going to say it's not happening, but, you know, in not so many words, it's not happening. And I'll just have to say this that I am tired of seeing the hashtag we released the Snyderverse or whatever the Snyderverse people are saying to good is over. It is over accept it accept it it's over we have the batman coming up we have um green lantern stuff coming up we have other things coming and wb seems to have a plan let's see that we already know what we're gonna get with snyderverse why because he told us People keep talking about it. He's already spelled it out. It's over, yo. It's over. Say what you want. These actors aren't... I don't know what serum they're taking, but they're certainly not getting any younger. And the more and more time that passes by, the less interested they're going to be. There are other things to do, and the Snyderverse is not one of them. And it's not on their list. It is over. Now, what I, I was gonna say something. There was something I wanted to talk about real quick, but I guess we'll have to wait because I can't remember. I, I think I, I got lost in my the, the the happiness I have in my my my. <laughs> my body right now that you know when you're happy you forget about everything else and i you know listen people can say what they want if you enjoy oh yes i remember now mortal kombat i'll just say this about mortal kombat i saw it i haven't seen it yet i won't spoil i won't say anything but i'll tell you this i fell asleep this is supposed to be a, an action film adrenaline you're gonna be up i fell asleep First half, possibly. This movie was atrocious. The YouTube videos that they did for Mortal Kombat was way better than this. Again, these game to movie things should be are better done as a series. Because these characters mean nothing in a movie 
there is no backstory other than possibly two or three lines. Oh, this guy comes from this place. And it's, it's meaningless unless you have some character development. For example, Netflix is doing Assassin's Creed. I can't wait for that. Mortal Kombat doesn't work. So without having seen it, and my expectations are significantly lower uh, than they were a, a week ago. So I'll have thoughts when we unpack it, you know, in detail on our next show. I don't totally agree with the idea of backstory because I think it depends on the game. You know, so you talk about Assassin's Creed, there has to be a backstory because the character flows through history in and out. And so there's this ongoing connectivity to that. Mm -hmm. Let me draw a parallel to something great, which has no character development and no backstory, but is amazing. Mm -hmm. Predator. Give me one piece of real backstory to those characters other than, okay, Blaine and Mac are friends. Dutch and Dylan used to work together and they're the best rescue team we've ever seen. There's no description of the Predator's motivation. There's no description of where any of these characters came from. They get off the chopper. They're put in the jungle. They get taken apart. Schwarzenegger saves, you know, manages to pull himself out and win the day. End of movie. Mm -hmm. Find me a better 80s action film than that. There isn't one. Yeah, Maybe Die Hard. Amazing. But my point Classic. is the movie leaned into the idea of less is more. Let's get to the chase. And the reason I draw the parallel is Mortal Kombat, the characters are so iconic because of how long the games have been around. Who needs an explanation of who they are? Take this into consideration. There's just so many people involved. There's so many characters involved. At least Predator, they already knew each other. We already know they were a team, a SWAT team, or whatever the case may be. They were going in for a mission. And this thing is around. With Mortal Kombat, all you know that there's people fighting and there's a tournament. In a movie, how do you make it work? I guess you got to do hell of, a hell of a job writing. And the editing has to be fantastic. And this movie, none of that was done well. But was there, okay, another parallel. Was there a lot of backstory to Bloodsport? I mean, Frank Dukes is fully trained you see his little training montage with his Shidoshi. He walks into the tournament. The characters are all just waiting. It's basically the same idea. I'm just saying, like, to me, the tournament concept is what made the franchise great. If you execute the martial arts well, why can't you basically just have the movie be the game and not a whole lot else as long as what you're putting on screen is truly badass? Again, the writing was was horrendous. I there think you go. Has, I think it's just it has to do with the writing, but they've tried how many times already? With films, three, three right? One of them didn't even make it to theaters, correct? No, Annihilation. Annihilation was made at the theaters. Oh yeah, it was one. three. It made it there. Yeah. Was there another one? No, oh, no, no, no. The... there was a Street Fighter one with Chung Li, I think. Oh yeah, with um, Kristen Krug, who was. Yeah, um, yeah. Lana Lang in Smallville. Yeah. Yeah. I, these things are difficult to pull off is what I'm saying. Oh, totally agree. But I also feel like I'm just making the point that Street Fighter, the movie, Mortal Kombat movies have all tried to build this adventure around what the game was. I would actually like to see one of these movies try to just say, you know what? Let's just do the game and do it well on screen and play the hits. And let's see if people, audiences respond more to 100 and 105 minutes of a truly progressive tournament. You're probably right in that, re in that respect. There How could it be worse yeah, at this yeah, point yeah, than yeah, what yeah, we've exactly. seen? Exactly. I think they're trying to make a story, but it's hard to make a story out of this. In right. Just an hour and a half or two hours, however long it is. If they just do straight out a tournament, 
but then again you have there's there's other stakes involved and it's just the writing has to be better the writing has to be better and, and if you're gonna do this movie you you can't it was a first time director uh i think he the director also wrote it if i'm not mistaken it was just a mess but watch it or try to watch it <laughs> all right we'll do a full unpack in our next show with that teaser but yeah yeah um and, and we'll we'll get into it next week ladies and gentlemen that's our show for today please hit that like subscribe button hit that notification bell um, um and share with your friends it really does help support the channel and thank you for joining us once again on the nerd gym report we'll see you next time brian any last words no, it feels weird to have a little bit of a break. I know we're going to recap Invincible, recap Mortal Kombat. We'll have more casting news, but we have a little bit of a break right now until Loki comes out. So you know, a chance to recharge the batteries a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a long time to wait. I wish they would have uh, probably get us, give, given us at least just two weeks, but we got to wait pre pretty much almost, almost a month till we get Loki. And I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Loki has to to bring because there have been talks of already green lighting a second season for this, so it it must be good. It must be good. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Have a great day, great night, and we'll see you next time.